All right, we are waiting just a minute to get started, um, before, allowing time for other members to join. Please, um, well, it is 6.01. All right, I will call to order this meeting of the Nantucket Planning and Economic Development Commission for uh, Monday, March 20th. It is uh, 6.01 p.m. And we are convening by video conference pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 as extended on July 16th of 2022. This meeting is being recorded and all attendees are participating remotely via Zoom as identified on the town's website uh, for how the public may join. Uh, anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please silence all phones and devices. Member of the public wishing to participate in the meeting must use their full name for Zoom access. If full names are not used, people will not be allowed to participate in the discussion. The town reserves the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use their full name or who acts inappropriately. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment. For items with public comment, after members have spoken, the chair will afford public comment to those members of the public that have joined the meeting via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to speak must state their names and be acknowledged by and speak through the chair. If you're not able to participate in the remote meeting, you may also submit comments to uh, our uh, support staff, uh, Megan Trudell, mtrudell at nantucket-ma.gov to be read into the meeting record. Uh, I am Mary Longacre, Chair of the Nantucket Planning and Economic Development Commission. Permit me to confirm all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Seth Engelborg? Here. Dave Iverson? Here. Bert Johnson? Here. Matt Lowell? Here. Mary Rector? Here. And I think those are all the members that have joined us at the moment. We will note if any others do pop in. Um, staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Andrew Vorse? Here. Leslie Snell? Here. Megan Trudell? Here. Mike Burns? Here. And we also have Raisa Kwame from MassDOT? Here. Thank you all. Uh, finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. So turning to the first item on the agenda, uh, approval of the agenda. I don't think we have any changes, Megan, or um, are we doing anything with the minutes today? Um, I think Fiona is gonna be working on some corrections for the February 23rd minutes. So if you wanna go ahead and continue those to the next meeting so we can work through that, that would be great. Okay, so with that uh, removal, uh, no other changes, can we get a motion to accept the agenda? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Bert. Second? Second. Thank you, Barry. Roll call vote, Seth Engelborg? Aye. Dave Iverson? Aye. Bert Johnson? Aye. Uh, Christy, we're approving the minutes of December 19th, if you want to enter your vote. Aye. Um, excuse me. Uh, Nat Lowell? Aye. Barry Rector? Aye. Mary Longacre, aye. Uh, noting that Christy Ferrantella joined us. Um, all right, um, public comment. Are there any members of the public here that wish to comment at this time? Uh, I was remiss, we are expecting the speaker, Henry Terry. I do see he's in attendance. So Henry, can you just unmute and say hello and we'll come back to you uh, when the agenda calls for it. Hi, Mary. <laughs> Good evening, Henry. Um, if there are no other members of the public in attendance that want to offer a comment, we will go forward to approving the minutes of December 19th. Uh, thank you, Megan, for providing those. Uh, were there any comments or questions on the minutes for December 19th? Mm -hmm. If none, we'll take a motion to approve those. Motion. Move. I'll take Bert's second. motion and Matt's second. Roll call yep. vote, Smith Engelborg. Aye. Christy Parentella? Aye. Dave Iverson? Aye. Bert Johnson? Aye. Matt Lowell? Aye. Mary Rector? Aye. And Mary Longacre, aye. Thank you. Um, next item is our transportation program manager update. Welcome back, Mike. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I haven't just yet, I'm just starting off my second week here. I don't have a formal written report for you all. I am putting together information on the status of various projects and studies that are going on. There is an item in your agenda, or at least a letter in your packet, uh, and an item on your agenda for a letter uh, for the, uh, um, from MassDOT's project review committee, uh, just noting that there was an approval 
of the Milestone Road at Pulpus Road uh, intersection improvement and bike path extension from the Pulpus bike path to the uh, Monomoy, uh, intersection of Monomoy where the bike path uh, currently ends. So that uh, project will start. There will likely be a public meeting scheduled later in the year. That's to be confirmed. And the total cost, I believe I see now, which is subject to change, uh, 1.2 million for that project. And um, that'll be discussed next month when we discuss the uh, transportation improvement program and releasing that draft tip out for public review. Um, and then uh, we'd like to have that approved probably at a uh, May uh, meeting. But um, happy to answer any other questions you might have about other projects, but that's uh, the milestone at Pulpus Road intersection improvements and extension of the bike path is uh, really the only item we have significant updates on right now. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, noting that Wendy Hudson was able to join us about six minutes after. Welcome, Wendy. Uh, any questions for Mike? Mike? Matt? Uh, Madam Chair. Um, Mike, so this won't happen this, this spring, right? I mean, I know today was the first day of spring. I realize that. But or well, tomorrow, today, the 5 o'clock, I think. So that's unlikely, right? Very likely, Let's right? Go. You might know a little bit more than I do about this, but I believe it's to be programmed in uh, 2025, I believe, is the uh, optimistic uh, or realistic time frame that that project would be uh, uh, meaning that it would be eligible for construction in October of 24 at the earliest. Right, so did you want to add anything to that? Um, yes, hi everyone. So yes, um, all the information that Mike has shared is correct. Um, and so for that project, we do indeed have the letter um, and it will be programmed in this in the STIP document. Um, and um, um, yeah, so that's that's the information that we have um, as, as of now. Um, and um, uh, I, I, this will be um, uh, prioritized in the state uh, programming of funds. Um, and I am happy to follow up after the meeting with further questions. Uh, we'll answer them through Mike, but um, that's what we have as of uh, thank you. Um, and Race, I have a, a question. Um, I, I see that the long range transportation plan is due for a refresh. Are all of the long range transportation plans in the state on the same four year cycle with the same year? Because uh, I saw that Cape Cod was doing theirs the same year that we're doing ours. I was just curious. Yes. So in terms of the long range transportation plan, um, most MPOs are updating their long range transportation plans now. Um, and the uh, date we are aiming for the long range transportation plan release um, for um, uh, approval is ju June. Um, so yes, most MPOs are on the same timeline. Thank you. Uh, any other updates from MassDOT? I currently do not have any updates at this time. Okay. Uh, Andrew, you have a comment? Madam Chair, I just wanted to make sure, I don't, Mike, I don't know if you've updated the commission or I can't remember if uh, about Wawinit that we also got um, positive mm -hmm. news on the Wawinit um, side path as well. Um, yeah, thanks for uh, reminding me about that. Yeah, we just got noticed last week. We don't have the, the letter just yet, but we did get a, a verbal uh, notification that the 2022 uh, Federal Land Access Program, FLAP grant, uh, that was applied for uh, in October of 2022, I believe it was October of 2022, last year, uh, for 823,000, was actually approved for 875,000. So uh, uh, there's now a significant amount of funding uh, for that project that's been approved. As you know, previously there was 1.25 million that was approved and uh, in 2016, uh, 350,000. Uh, that was approved. So um, yeah, well over $2 million in, in federal grant funding for that project, which right now has an estimate of uh, 4.5. So about half of okay. the entire project is funded uh, uh, with federal grants. 
Thank you, Mike. Um, I'll note John Trudell was able to join us a minute or two ago. Uh, welcome, John. And uh, any further questions for Mike under the Transportation Program Manager update item? Right. If there are none, um, next item is the town area plan. Uh, so that work group is uh, represented here by its chair, Henry Terry, and Henry's gonna give us an update on the progress of that group. Welcome, Henry. You're still muted. How's that? Here we go. All right. The work group divided into subgroups, each taking an element. Uh, some preliminary work has been done by each group. We're waiting for survey data and the survey closes on the 31st. Hopefully we'll have an initial submission for you uh, this summer. And that's about it. <laughs> Short and sweet, Henry. <laughs> that's the way we like it. Yeah. Uh, I, I am also anyway. in the work group and let me just add a, a thank you uh, to the assistance we've had from PLUS so far in uh, getting that survey out. Uh, postcards went to the homeowners in that area um, and some of the voters as well. And uh, we had a little bit of a, a difficulty with almost 10% of the postcards bouncing back, including over 100, which came back with vacant Nantucket addresses. Uh, so we're following up with the uh, media blast to let people know that that survey is available and that went out today. Uh, we look forward to getting those results. Uh, any questions or comments uh, to Henry regarding the activities of the town area uh, plan work group? Okay, Henry, thank you for coming tonight and uh, okay. I'll see you at our next meeting. Yes, thank you. Um, okay, next item is the open space and recreation plan. Uh, Andrew, do you wanna walk us through our job on that tonight? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so we um, have received uh, an update, which um, I think corrected many of the incorporated and corrected many of the comments um, submitted. Um, this uh, plan is required to be approved by locally by planning board, by the NPNEDC, and uh, its final uh, approval is at the select board. That is now scheduled for uh, April 12th. So um, what we would ask that the commission um, uh, accept the draft open space plan tonight, uh, subject to any further um, ed non-substantial edits, potential changes that may come out of the final public hearing. So. All right. Any comments or questions, or does somebody want to make a motion to that effect if we have none? Mad yeah, Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion at this point that the NB and EDC hereby accepts and endorses the open space and recreation plan in its current iteration. I'll second that. Su uh, subject to any uh, yes. further? Yes, absolutely. Uh, thank you for the second. Yes. Any further comment or question? We'll go to a roll call vote. Seth Engelborg? Aye. Christy Frantella? Aye. Wendy Hudson? Aye. Dave Iverson? Aye. Bert Johnson? Aye. Matt Lowell? Aye. Barry Rector? Aye. Joe Topham? Aye. John Trudell? Aye. And Mary Longacre, aye. Thank you all. And uh, thank the consultants who worked on that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm spacing out their name. Andrew, would you remind us? Sinan Sampson, yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, next item on the agenda, continuing our discussion of NP and EDC's mission. Uh, there were a couple of um, things provided in the packet. Um, the, uh, the Word document included was a uh, first a revised and updated list of what was available from the other regional planning organizations. And thank you to Barry for continuing the research and providing that. 
um, then some notes that I had provided and some notes that Barry had provided. And we also had uh, earlier today, some notes that Seth Engelberg has provided. So we have quite a lot of, um, of potential uh, going into that. Um, Barry or Seth, do you want to uh, introduce your comments or, or how would you like to start? I, there's, Madam Chair, for you, I, I think there's a few different thoughts and a few different ideas of, of what was brought up that begins to formulate what we're going to look like. And so, for instance, Seth provided a vision statement. Um, I think all of us provided mission statements. Um, I know I did things with objectives. Um, so I don't know if that's a good place to start, whether we incorporate those major parts of it um, and then what does that begin to look like? I don't know if that serves for a good foundation. I am definitely open to, to this being guided anyway. Seth, do you wanna provide any comments? Sure, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so what I sent in was a very quick draft probably no more than 15 or 30 minutes on it. But I think the structure is, in my, in my mind, pretty important that we, we lay out this tiered approach. You know, the vision is why we exist. We have a historical reason of existing because of legislation that was enacted, but that was several decades ago at this point. So we need to re-envision that and, uh, make it clear. And if we don't do that, we'll probably become very good at doing something, but for no particular reason. Uh, and then the mission is, okay, what are we going to do? And then the responsibilities is the language in the current charter, or really it's actions. This is how are we going to fulfill our mission and vision? So I think this structure is very important. I, uh, try to align some of my language with like the select board strategic plan, which is a obviously a comprehensive planning approach, but we are different than the select board. We're regionally focused. Um, and so there's there needs to be some uh, variance in scope, but uh, I think going from the vision, mission and responsibilities approach is what I'd like to see. Uh, thank you, Megan. You read my mind. She is displaying on the screen the um, language that Seth provided. So much appreciated. Um, so I guess we are looking for um, feedback from the commissioners, um, further ideas for wording or for uh, subject matter that belongs um, in, in how we would want to organize that. Um, if there are members that have um, their own thoughts on that, certainly welcome to provide those. So any comments or questions from commissioners? And Madam Chair, if I may? Yes. I, I know open meeting law makes this type of uh, process difficult, but um, you know, I want people to look at the language I've provided and tear it apart. I'm not going to get mad if the end goal, uh, the end language is significantly different than what I've provided today. This is just my thoughts in the short amount of time. So I think if we can do this process uh, through this webinar, of course, but I think also people could uh, track changes and send it to staff and they could compile the changes for a review for a future mm -hmm. meeting. Thank you, Seth. I, I agree. I look at this as a buffet <laughs> that we can we can pick the best bits and have a wonderful meal at the end. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Barry, if you want to also add your comment, um, yeah, I I think that's probably a good idea. The commissioners really, I mean, we need to get focused on this. There's no question about it. I was hoping tonight maybe we'd begin to get to that stage. Um, I thought one thing that was very important was to separate out what we're going to try to accomplish in terms of objectives, uh, even some of the loftier goals further down into the document 
so that we we can begin to hammer those things out. One thing I steered, steered very clear from is the board of selectmen and their strategic plan. Um, their strategic plan, unfortunately, tends to change and sometimes change very radically depending upon the next iteration of the board. Um, even with that strategic plan that was launched by Novak in 2020, um, I will tell you there are some major concerns that were brought forward from the Novak group about how they conducted their business. And um, I, I don't. I think since we're going to be dealing with things on a regional basis, I don't think that alignment is as critical when you put it into a document like this. You're you're almost saying, OK, we are going to do this level of handholding, whereas I see the commission being a little bit more broader in scope um, in terms of working on a regional basis, of course, bringing other things in. But I don't think they should be guiding us. We should be guiding them and maintain an overall awareness of what's going on in the community, which may radically deviate from from their from their plan. Um, so, at, you know, I'm not saying it couldn't be in there, but at first blush, um, it made me go running in the other direction um, just because of some of those thoughts. So. Uh, I, th I think what's important here is for us to to really go out and talk about what it is that we see as our objectives here in the mission statement. And they, they shouldn't be so well refined in that mission statement. They should be a little bit on the lofty side. Um, I think it's important to note in here as well, too, um, where our authority lies at. Um, I think the only thing I may want to do with the scope authority is strike that that little paragraph there with the you know limited regulatory authority. Um, that, that's a very specific thing that we haven't pulled the trigger on. Uh, objectives, again, I, I'm way open to the idea of, you know, that's just a starting point that I worked with, um, it was taken not only from just my experience with the board over these years worth of time, but I looked at all the different regional planning agencies and tried to also pick out some of the, what I say is the best language in there. Um, you know, sincerest form of flattery at times is, is to be able to copy other people's work. So I did exercise that liberty of using some of the language that I thought, which was really, important to do. Megan, if you could scroll down for a sec. And I think that this is really, once we kind of the mission dialed in, this is really the meat of, of where we need to be sitting at. Um, what is it that we're going to, you know, again, we can add to this, but where are we going to look at? What are we going to do? And, you know, realizing the fact too, that when this document was first drafted back in 1972, Nantucket was a very different place with some very different things going on at the time. Um, that's why when you read through that document, it was meant to be very lofty. Um, zoning was not well-defined at that point. The island was not well-defined uh, as well. And you know it. so you had things coming in there that looked at, who should be involved in the process and how would they guide that process? And then if you want to just scroll down a tad further. Um, again, I just looked at doing this in, in a slightly different way um, about where our areas of concern and interest should be. And then lastly, I think I left one other thing in there, hopefully. Gee, you know, there's just a few things that have been floating out there. I've heard the word agency trying to be connected to us as well. Uh, make no mistake about it. We really are a commission at this point. And that 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 is, I think, a very essential part when it comes time to talk about what the name of this organization should be. Um, so I've tried to include some things in there for you just to, just to understand what I've come up with. Uh, my own thoughts over the time, and then what I've come up with research from looking at the other RPAs. Thanks. Thanks, Barry. 
Um, Christy, I'm going to ask you a question in a minute, but I wanted to piggyback on something that Barry said. Um, what, what I found useful in the select board strategic plan was their vision statement at the beginning. And, and I think Barry has a good point that their strategic plan is not intended to encompass all of their goals. Mm. It's, it's their highest priorities. Um, so, so I agree that we, we wouldn't want to um, limit ourselves to just what's in there. Um, but I think we should look for, uh, we, we should look to avoid any conflicting goals. Um, so that, that would be my, um, anyway, so the, the vision part of it at the beginning was what um, I thought was the most useful for us, um, especially because I personally struggle with the difference between mission and vision. And thank you, Seth, for taking a stab at that. Um, Christy, I think if I'm correct, you were on the select board in 2020 when the particular document we're referring to was drafted. I know it's been updated since. Yes. Do you want to add your perspective? Um, then... I think kind of similar to your point, Mary, I think that it's really helpful to have a vision in the way that the select board kind of went, um, it had an iterative process where we kind of said our vision is what do we want Inteca to look like in say 50 years. And then that's the statement we made. Like we want to have these things in place. You know, we want to make sure that there's no stoplights. Uh, we, we made statements of how we envisioned Inteca to look. And then from there, we set goals that we expected to kind of fill within a year. So yes, the strategic plan is always changing because we accomplish goals and we keep moving. And one of the recent ones, they talked about how, you know, one of them was to reach safe harbor. We've been doing that every single year since they set that goal. So is that still a goal or do, do you kind of move the target? And so I think it's important to kind of realize that you can have a vision and then goals that can be changed. But I think that um, that it was a good start at what Seth put together of the mission and the vision. Great. Thank you, Christy. Uh, John? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I was just thinking, I don't know, I, I've been reading a lot about the uh, uh, general terms of uh, uh, regional municipalities, and it's just a thought, and I, I definitely don't want to step on anyone's toes, and I really appreciate Seth's and Barry's time that they put in in um, uh, writing down the, the mission and the goals and things. But I just for conversation, should we include or be inclusive of any kind of um, uh, you know, mention of the Cape and Islands uh, in specifically, um, only because when we think about a region, we're directly tied to the Cape and Islands. Uh, when I look at a couple of things, we're connected through underground cables. Um, we're connected with transportation with the steamship and the High Line, uh, even to a point where we're connected by the bridges, obviously, um, to get over here to get to the Cape and to get over here, aside from flights, uh, we would have to uh, travel over the bridges. Uh, I know in the past, years past, we've had conversations with the uh, discussions about the Sagamore Bridge and the improvements, and the state was looking to us for any kind of uh, opinions or ideas. Of uh, did John freeze up there? Mm. Oh, I'm sorry, John. Um, let me fill a gap and hopefully your, your uh, connection will restore. Um, I, I think that one thing I'm, I'm just realizing as a result of what Christy said is that we want to be careful not to put uh, too much action into this document. The action should be things that we uh, set at our level, not at the state legislation level uh, because things uh, are done and then they roll off and new things replace them. So we, I think we need to be mindful of um, not being too action oriented and being more um, goal oriented. Um, as Christy said, what does Nantucket look like in 50 years? Um, that That's something that is more appropriate for the state legislation level that is what we wanna be working on right now, I believe. Um, Andrew, can you provide any further guidance there? And then we'll go to Seth. No, I, I mean, I, I agree with that. I think, um, and I mean, I. I, I think that both Barry and Seth's um, and yours, Madam Chair, your, your um, submission was very helpful in getting some ideas. I, I really appreciate the brevity of, um, uh, of Seth's um, statement, and I think that's really the way to go there. Um, I think the, you know, the objectives um, 
kind of lead to to the more detailed sort of um, uh, explanation of what you know what the action items uh, are, as you say. And I do think that we don't. I mean, I do think John's right. We are currently thought of and part of that Cape and Islands region, but I do. You know, we're also moving into some other regions too, like in um, Perpad, which is the uh, southeastern uh, region. And so there may be other, um, you know, other areas that we want to uh, connect to as well. So I think mission wise, I think, you know, we should be as open as possible. And then I think certainly we could talk about. You know the overall economy and and other connections that were mentioned with the Cape and Islands, but there may be some other regions at least that we have connections uh, to as well. Thank, thank you. That's a great point, uh, Megan. Would you put up the section that has my comments? Um, I think I did have a regional um, focus in there, and while you're doing that, let's go to Seth. Thank you, Madam Chair, and I know Megan's going to put your comments, but in my submission as well, you'll see that in the mission statement, interregional collaboration is specifically called out. So I think when we get to the point of <clears throat> maybe com combining the highlights or the uh, all-star players of each of these drafts, we'll make sure to include that regional collaboration. Um, I think we all have an opinion that Cape Cod is especially important in terms of collaboration, but to me, that's an action, not a mission statement. That's a specific objective that we can do is to um, have quarterly meetings or promote inter-organizational communication with the Cape Cod Commission or whatever it may be. Those are specific actions. Um, just to tie up a few other points here too, in terms of strategic planning, apart from a you know governmental body, it gets kind of difficult, but at most organizations, you would set a specific timeline for your plan. We're a little bit um, in a tough position because I know we want to limit the amount of legislative updates we need to make. So like a normal, strategic planning process could be as few as three to five years. And in that process, you would be reviewing the vision and the mission and the actions in that period. I think we can set a longer scope for our vision and mission, and we could still review our, our actions or objectives at an internal level at that timeline, but we need to be uh, broad enough and um, have uh, concise enough language to minimize the amount of amendments we need to make to our um, legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Seth. Uh, going to Barry. I, I can wait a second, just see if anyone else has anything else they want to chime in on. We, we would love to hear from other commissioners. <laughs> Uh, Nat, are Nat. you trying to say something? You're muted. Sorry about that. Is the is the what's up on the screen now it for yours or is there more at the end of? Um, it, it's that's <laughs> most of it. I think if you scroll, down, I, I asked a few questions in mine um, that were just for discussion purposes. Right. I like what you said. I like the way you, you know sort of explained the functionality of it, the nuts and bolts. I mean, kind of like every, a little bit of everything that Seth has said, that Barry has said, I do like the name Regional Planning Commission. I know we've discussed the word planning being removed. We definitely remove in the economic development part. I appreciate, I think we all agree on that. Um, but the word planning, I. I, I kind of like to leave it. I think that right now the word planning is getting sort of, you know, used a little bit too much with certain, you know, 
different people's feelings about certain things and that word gets pops up and becomes a the new problem instead of the solution. So um, I do I do like that word being in there and reading the other titles kind of gives me that, but that, that's just my opinion. Um, as far as the connectivity that John talked about with the Cape, I mean, I, I brought that up, you know, a couple of meetings ago about basketball. I mean, you have the workforce issue because no one's brought up. I mean, how many people are coming over here to work every day? Is there going to be another day, a day when we need more people coming that early? We're going to have remote. We're going to have like Mike is living in Hyannis. He's not living in like, you know, suburbs of Boston. He's living like a 27, 26 and a half miles from here. If you add a half and a half a mile to his place, might not be quite that far. Um, that that's that could be the new future for certain employees because they can still they can come here easily but not every day and that i think is something that you know 10 years ago we wouldn't have even mentioned something like that so i hate when we you know i don't like when we start talking about 50 years so loosely i think that there are certain things that you can talk about in 50 years but nobody knew the fast boats were coming in 1994, when they built the new slip in Hyannis in 96. And guess what? The fast boat started in 96. It was small, but it started. So it's hard to predict everything. Um, what Christy actually said something that made me laugh a little bit when she said what something about what shouldn't happen. I've had a list of things that I can rattle off. What should never happen on Nantucket? There's a list. There's a pretty solid list, four or five things. And I think that that's a really good idea. I just don't know if it's appropriate to put in, in any kind of mission statement, but it's something that we should have somewhere in our, um, you know, reports or whatever stuff that people can look back on. We certainly, you know, we obviously understand what happened with CBS and that the chain store thing and, formula business now we call it, but there's way more than that. Um, there was a movement a hundred years ago to pave over main street because the milk delivery people were dropping bottles or something like that. That was in the looking back, we call them. So there's, you know, there's a lot of things that we can look at that way, but I do think that the connectivity to the Cape is a very important part of us that we kind of forget the schools, there are kids going to school on the Cape now from here. Um, the sports, the integrated sports programs are getting more and more integrated because of the fast ferries, because of the ability to, for people to figure out how to make that work. Um, so I'm open to anything, anyone, you know, any, any change anyone has. I just think that those, those issues are important. Especially now. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, that those are some good examples of the way that we're connected to the Cape. Uh, let's go to Dave Iverson. Thank you, Madam Madam Chair. Um, uh, uh, just a couple things. A, um, I, you know, I was a big fan of getting rid of the word planning, but I, I think that as long as as it is used in conjunction with regional, I think that 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 is will be fine. I just, um, as we know, there's a lot of confusion going on about what we actually do. So I think if we target it as regional planning, um, I think that that would be a, um, a positive. Um, I think Seth had a really good idea in the beginning that, that maybe we take his and yours, Mary, and, and we send changes um, to staff and let them kind of consolidate them if they can. Um, uh, and I think one thing we've left out, and, and actually I think Andrew mentioned it, is uh, we can't forget about New Bedford here. Um, we talked a lot about the Cape and uh, and the Vineyard, um, but we haven't talked about uh, New Bedford. So I think we need to um, we need to, to weave them in. Um, and that's about all I got to say at the moment. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. Um, th there's also the potential 
for us to learn from other islands and not just Martha's Vineyard. So just as a, for instance, the Keeping History Above Water conference that's happening this week that I'm planning to attend um, is being held in Trinidad and Tobago and they are islands. And so one of the reasons I'm attending is to see if there is anything that they're doing uh, as an island that we should be aware of and thinking about um, you know, regarding the, the threats from sea level rise and erosion and climate change. Um, so there, there, are, there are islands off the main coast. There are um, you know, many islands. Um, you know, Hawaii is another one that we look at for the Coastal Resilience Advisory Committee. And there are organizations of islands um, because islands face some unique challenges that they have in common. So that's another potential uh, group to look at. Uh, Barry um, and then Wendy. Oh, you want Wendy to go ahead? Marie. Uh, yeah, I'd love Wendy to go ahead. And I don't know if you want to pick back up to John because uh, when he got to the oh, first back. screen there, yeah, he's back. Sorry about that. I don't know when I was frozen out. Uh, I kept um, speaking, but uh, I think you got the gist of what I was saying because I, following through with some comments, um, you were discussing, uh, I guess, the start of what I was talking about. Thank you, John. Let's go to Wendy. Oh, um, I just was going to chime in. I think the kind of on that, on that conference thing, Mary, um, it made me think of all the work that Remain has done in that, you know, department. And the NHA had a conference um, with the National Park Service back in December, the, uh, um, you know, around rising waters and islands, et cetera. And it was with a global perspective with a really incredible thing. So part of the challenge, I think, is, you know, is, is the pace of all this stuff accelerate so so much like we can see that our tools for dealing with them aren't always good especially you know the public policy side moves a lot slower than than the you know than than the world is moving nowadays and you know us meeting monthly and talking about things doesn't always doesn't always do it so as much i think narrowing the scope of what the public expects from this particular organization is is good and if narrowing the name of it helps you know like we were just talking you know, the regional planning piece is what we do. The other parts, you know, that maybe we all have very much interest in, but isn't what this group does. And so where do those roles belong? How, you know, what is the, where can the public look to get those answers or, you know, how can they create, or maybe there's another structure that we need to, to get going, but really clarifying those lanes and, and communicating what we do and what we don't, um, I think can only help. So I struggle with this with this particular um, document because, you know, I I would ramble for day, you know, pages and pages um, with all that stuff. But I hear everybody saying like concise. I hear Andrew like this needs to be more brief, um, but it just needs to, you know, have you know like which part is for the legislation and which part is for our like inner workings and and for the public's um, knowledge would be is the challenge to communicate. Thank you, Wendy. All right, Barry, we're back to you. Thanks, I, I appreciate it. Um, so in no particular order with things at, at this point, I do hear the idea of a strategic plan and I'm not adverse to that, but I think that we're better first focusing on, on the broader things that need to take place before we refine ourselves down to like a five or 10 year strategic plan. Let's talk about where we see ourselves in the future, paint the picture with very broad brush strokes initially, and then get to, okay, we've defined these things. Let's begin to talk about each one and maybe set certain time oriented objections to do, uh, objectives to doing that. Um, thought long and hard about removing the word planning from that when I put in Nantucket Regional Commission. That was just a thought. Um, there was a part of me that wanted to steer away from planning and the notions that the planning board runs the NPNEDC. Um, when I looked at the names of the various commissions and agencies out there, there was a mix. There was a definite mix of things, but a lot of them just usually stated what area they were encompassing. They were a commission, and sometimes they might use the word regional in there. Um, I'm glad Dave brought up the whole thing with New Bedford, 
Um, I tried to, when I was creating the document that I showed you, I tried to keep to the bigger scale of things because there are going to be areas that we are going to want to work with and we shouldn't limit ourselves just to the Cape. Um, we shouldn't limit ourselves to Martha's Vineyard. That's another whole conversation. But there are other places that we do and probably should make firmer associations with like New Bedford, which I don't think the Cape would say, hmm, wow, you thinking about moving stuff to New Bedford for us? We'd be happy with that bridge thing and all that good stuff. Um, there's also Boston as well, too with the airports that we use here, although not as big as it used to be. So I again, I wanted to try to say that we'd be working with other regions in, the, in Massachusetts, not just limiting that focus down into the ones we know the best. Um, I, just, I wanna be a little cautious too with some of the language that we put in. Um, it, we use certain terms like social welfare, beautiful thing but what does that mean you've got i think each one every time you mention something like that you've got to think what the broader implication is of using a term like that i think if you talk about social welfare for instance you, you're you're saying you know all of a sudden it takes on a very different meaning depending upon who you're talking to if you say social welfare to, to 20 people you're going to get 20 different answers about what social welfare means so we need, I think at times when we use certain terms, we need to look at them in terms of what their broader meaning is. Um, the other thing I tried to do too in, in my document was to uh, steer away from other agencies that are already doing these kinds of work out there to avoid potential overlap. And I thought that was that was a big thing. Again, we don't want to be, at least in my mind, the master of all. I think that's where we need to move our focus a little bit more into working with other regional areas, which at times is not as well defined. Um, and then some of the stuff that we may think, oh, well, that's important to Nantucket. Maybe we need to look at what other agencies are doing that so we're not like, here, we've got the answer. Thank you for your work. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, if we, if they want us to collaborate, great, but I don't, again, I don't want to be the master of all here. And so when I started doing that, I, I used some of those filters in coming up with the language that I had put in. So thank you. Thank you, Barry. And, and I want to uh, agree with that. I think we have the, the luxury of having only one component jurisdiction so that instead of having you know three or four or seven or ten or whatever number of, of towns, each with its own housing challenges, that that we are somehow supposed to coordinate and fairly um, you know deliver services, we have one town which has uh, already at least four agencies that are charged with uh, you know making uh, affordable housing um, you know a reality here on Nantucket, and and so we can say okay they got it we don't need to step in on that. You know, perhaps, perhaps that's an area that is already well done. Um, you know, and, and there, there may be others like that. Uh, so I, I consider that a luxury that, that we can say, um, you know what, Let, let's leave it to the experts on that subject. Other thoughts? Right. Matt? Just, just real quick to just sort of summarize this word planning. A little bit more. I just jotted down a few things. So you have the DPW is, a, you know, I know they're under this town, but they have their sort of plans, select board strategic plan. Then we have the planning board with the word plan in it. Then we have the water company's plans, which are constantly evolving. Okay. We have the airport with their plans, which are constantly evolving. And now we have the sewer department, which is an incredible operation, like the water company that seems to be just, you know, for lack of a better term, kicking butt out there with what they're doing. I can tell you that. But that's all part of us. Okay. So, you know, I've been doing this a long time. And I, and I think 
what we what we need to do, and this has nothing to do with the statement or any of that, but no, it may be a little bit. It could be. That depends. Um, but working better with the town. I'm not talking about the town. I'm talking about all the different departments, the different, you know, that was one of my thoughts about the land bank being on this commission um, and having Mark Willett come give a little speech once in a while, um, which is fascinating when he talks about the water and David as well. And maybe even the airport. Why not? You know, a couple times a year, once a year, whatever. Because everybody's got a role here. And it's all planning and working and improving things. It just may not always, you know, be very collaborative or working. You know what I mean? Like you're going to see what you're going to see right now on Lily Street and Liberty and Gardner and getting that pipe, that 20 inch pipe. It, the craziest way possible, like one of those games in the Boston Globe that you could never fill up, you know, the little hedge game. Remember that on the Sunday Globe? I mean, that's how that sewer line's headed out to Surfside. It certainly isn't a straight line, but that took some serious planning. A lot of money and a lot of, you know, a lot of thought and strategic work engineering to figure that out. And I think we're just a cog in the wheel. And I just think that that whole term has to be, you know, realized for what it really is in reality. Um, and hopefully that can come out of this because there's always somebody planning something. So thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Nat. Uh, go to Seth. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, for comic relief here, I appreciate your point about, you know, islands having similar challenges and opportunities. And every time the topic of Puerto Rico statehood comes up, I joke that we should secede from Massachusetts and create a commonwealth of the coastal islands. Uh, Seth, you, you, you are too young to realize that we've pretty much tried. Yeah, sure. I, I, I know the history, but um, <laughs> but yes. Um, but you're you're right, and uh, we can we can learn and look to other uh, islands for for both the challenges and the opportunities because they are unique. Um, islands have a lot of unique resources ecologically, culturally, et cetera, that mainland places don't have. So I I want to make sure we're not thinking of it only as a detriment. Um, and then to Nat's point. I agree totally. And the word I used uh, in my draft was synchronized, but I really mean like coordinate and um, um, cooperate and make sure that we're not being a cog in the wheel, that we're taking all of these individual planning efforts that are being done by appropriate town entities and putting them into a comprehensive framework and making sure that they don't um, conflict with each other and then adding our own pieces in that are originally focused. And then just my last point here is in, in terms of the vision and a lot of what I've heard in this discussion makes me convinced even more that we need a vision. But, you know, at, at the basic level, I think no one will disagree that the vision essentially is to make sure Nantucket is still a livable place in X amount of years, because that's a that's a real possibility that it it won't be in the future. But then when we refine that vision into what are we going to do to uh, protect and enhance the community and support support and maintain the livability of our island, that's when we'll hit at our exact vision. Thank you, Seth. Um, anybody we haven't heard from, uh, Joe, uh, Bert, I think you're the, perhaps the only two we haven't heard from tonight. Do you have any thoughts you want to add? No, I think everyone's covered it. Okay. No, I'm a little behind. I was sick all this weekend, so I'm just getting caught up. Oh, well, sorry to hear that, Joe. All good. Better. Okay, anything further on this topic tonight? Barry? 
Thanks, Madam Chair. I, I think that before we jump off of this topic, it would be important to set at least some goals here for our next meeting about where we want to be with things with this. I mean, there's been some work done, which is great. But there's, I view this too, where there's a point where we want to bring some closure to these things so we can move to our next stages. Um, it doesn't mean that because we're closing out a stage, we can't go back to it. Something may come up. It's like, oh my God, we didn't think about that. But I think it's important to, to, to start getting things to where we feel like, let's put that subject matter aside now, move on to the next topic or frame of discussion. And then, like I said, we can certainly revisit the document in the very end, but um, I think it's time for a homework assignment. And I might want to turn to Andrew, uh, May, for some guidance for that. Um, but yeah, I, I think by our next meeting, I'd like to start closing some of these areas out and thinking about what's the next thing we need to talk about. It could be the name, name of the commission, could be um, who do we think should be on the commission and what the composition is. Uh, I don't want to languish. I, I, I think it's important for us to keep keep moving ahead here. Thank you, Barry. Uh, I, I was thinking the same thing that you know we ought to come back with a, a single proposal um, for our vision mission. Um, and then if there is information that would not be part of the state, but would be part of what we internally want to adhere to, um, that can be indicated as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so Barry and I had agreed to meet on Sunday to um, you know, kind of go over what we wrote, review what was said here today. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure, you know, who would be creating that proposed draft. Um, Andrew, is that something that you want to handle, or do you want uh, Barry and I to work on that and then bring it to you, or what is the best way forward, to Barry's point? Yeah, I think that we have enough information now to sort of put some, an, at least an initial version together, and then maybe after we do that, so if we kind of set a deadline for any like final comments from commissioners who we haven't heard from or any other ideas, uh, maybe by the 31st and then because we're, we're going to be at a conference and some other things at that time but after that we could put together sort of all the thoughts together and then maybe you and barry have another round or two um or you you may maybe you and barry and seth can maybe you know we since you have all put you know a lot of time into this could um you know, get us some additional feedback. And then for our April meeting, we would have, I think what you're looking for, Barry, is a more, you know, something where we could sort of hash out the last number of points and then uh, move on to some of the other items that are going to take time as well. So, yeah. So, Barry, maybe you and I figure out what the next chunk to tackle is uh, when we talk later. Um, so the 31st would be a Friday. So why don't we say um, by you know 8 a.m. Monday the 3rd so that commissioners have the weekend to submit and uh, staff can look forward to a Monday morning deluge. <laughs> um, and so that is two weeks from today as well. Um, so any, any further suggestions, any refinements, um, anything to do with the name, the vision, with the mission, with additional um, responsibilities, uh, tasks, goals, et cetera. Um, let's try and pull that all together. And in the next two weeks, offer any comments that you have um, to Andrew, Andrew, do you want them to you to be sent to you directly? Do you want them to copy Leslie and Megan? They can send them to me directly. That's great. And I'll make sure to get them distributed. Great. All right, anything else on this topic? And, and thank you, Barry, for that nudge. Uh, I was thinking the same thing, but always happy to hear somebody else say it. All right, if there's nothing else, uh, other committee updates and reports? Wendy? Um, I do have the happy news from the Rural Policy Advisory Commission. Um, I don't know if you all saw, but the Gov Governor Healy announced that 
um, she and the Lieutenant Governor are creating, um, how did they exactly phrase it? The, the um, a Director of Rural Affairs position has been created that's um, under the, the ex in the Executive Office of Economic Development. Um, so that it's the first time there's been a uh, rural policy position at the state level. So this this has been a high priority for the Rural Policy Advisory Commission. It's like we just need somebody at the state level whose job it is to pay attention to, you know, how the laws of the Commonwealth, you know, kind of affect the rural. And this really does, um, you know, Nantucket is rural because of the definition, but a lot of the issues tend to be more Western Mass um, related. So I can get you guys that um, governor's announcement if you haven't seen it yet. And um, it was really a, a positive thing. It was like a, announced a big fanfare out in Franklin County, or yeah, I think it was in Franklin County. So at long last, <laughs> there, there's there's movement. And um, so that was a good piece. I do need the a letter um, for reappointment. So I'll reach out to Megan because um, I think we had voted me to just stay on that commission, but all of our terms expired with the last governor. So we need to do a little... Uh, clean up on that regard, but that, that was progress and happy to have a little piece of news. Thank you, Wendy. And that's timely. The, the rural uh, communities is another group that we belong to uh, as Nantucket. So we should keep that in mind as well. Um, other reports from other committees? Right, I'm, I'm not seeing any. Um, other business, our next meeting is Monday, April 24th. That's a week later than normal because of Patriots Day on the 17th. Um, we will be meeting at five, but until we hear from the government about whether or not they're extending the permission for remote meetings um, that was issued in the pandemic, we don't know if that meeting in April will be in person live or if it will be again on Zoom. Uh, so we will keep you posted on that. Um, Anything else upcoming, Andrew? No, the only, I guess the only other thing maybe to report, um, we had our joint meeting, uh, planning board, finance committee and select board um, just prior to this meeting. So uh, all of the motions and uh, everything are now uh, settled. Um, finance committee, um, supported all of the planning board motions. So there's full consistency with that, which I think is a, a positive development. Um, and we do have that, um, we can uh, certainly get a link to you all so you can get an overview of the um, warrant articles for the upcoming ATM. Thank you, Andrew. All right, so our next, um item is to go into executive session. I will read the reason for that before we take a motion to adjourn our open session. So we want to go to executive session and not return to open session for reason number two, to conduct strategy sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel or to conduct collective bargaining sessions or contract negotiations with non-union personnel. Uh, there is a Zoom link in the agenda for that executive session for commissioners. We'll be ending this Zoom meeting and going to that one. May I take a motion to adjourn the open session and go into executive session? So moved, Madam Chair. Thank you, Barry. Bert, are you seconding? You're on mute. I'll second. Thank you, Bert. Uh, roll call vote, Seth Engelborg? Aye. Christy Ferrantella? Aye. Wendy Hudson? Aye. Dave Iverson? Aye. Bert Johnson? Aye. Nat Lowell? Aye. Gary Rector? Aye. Joe Topham? Aye. And John Trudell? Aye. Mary Longacre? Aye. Thank you. Let's uh, I'll move, move chairs. <laughs> Electronic. I did just um, send everyone via email that link again. So it should be at the top of your, your inboxes. Yeah. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan. Thank You're welcome. Thank you, Megan. Yeah. See you in, see you in a minute. Thank you. Yeah.